we can begin. This film is about a few mysteries. The first one, of course, is why am I here? Mr. Smith, a civilian, a passenger, narrating a film about flight service? Well, who has a better right? Who is more affected by what you and flight service do? Who's on the receiving end? Who is at your mercy for six or seven hours of flight, huh? Me, the traveler. And that brings us to the second mystery. For the traveler in this jet age, the world has shrunk. Time has expanded. You're always hearing that. But actually, for you in flight service, time has shrunk. The world has expanded. Now, to help me explain all this, we have, naturally, a cast of characters. Suzuki, Mr. Ahmed, Mrs. Morrison, Mrs. Dacunia, Mr. Thornhill, the cast. Where should we begin? All mysteries have to have a beginning, don't they? Oh, one thing more. This little mystery, I am responsible for, completely. So let's start here and work our way towards the conclusions. This is Miss Rosemary Barnett, stewardess. She's returning home after completing flight 103, the flight I was on. Oh. Oh. It's me. Jenny? Jenny? Jenny, come on, wake mm. up. Mm. Come on, you'll be late for your flight. Flight? Flight? Oh, my gosh, I dozed off. Oh, I had to rush around so much today, so much to do. Ironing, washing, packing. Oh, I know. I was out with Richard last night. Awfully nice. Awfully late. Oh, that's real rough. My uniform wasn't ready at the cleaners again. Doesn't it make you mad? Mm-hmm. I'd like to have a fresh uniform each flight, too. Well, who doesn't? But you can't wait till the last minute to send it out. Okay, I know. It's just... Well, do you think I'll ever get myself organized? Oh, you have to grow into this. You're practically a baby stewardess. Oh, I don't know. This is my fifth flight. <laughs> oh, excuse me. But I'll never settle into this routine. One day, you'll get on the plane, take a deep breath, and be in Europe. The next plane, another breath, Asia. From then on, it'll be kind of wonderful like that, like breathing. But it isn't going to happen if I keep on flying each time with a different senior purser. It's like changing jobs each trip. They have their own ways of doing things. So you learn to adjust right from the beginning. Ha! Huh. Come on, I'll help you pack. Who are you flying with? Alex, he's the senior. I hope he doesn't put me in the galley. Oh, he's nice, Alex. He goes by the book a little too much. No variations. But he's quiet and nice. And he'll probably put me in the galley. Cheer up. You could be flying with Roberto. He hangs over you like a puppeteer. He wants to do your job and his at the same time. You're in a goldfish bowl all the time as it is. No place to rest, to hide. It makes it harder when you've got a big fish in there with you telling you which way to turn. Don't I know. And I'm nervous and excited enough by myself before each flight. Look, 
When you're confronted with all those new faces each flight, just remember that there's always somebody who says he got a wrong seat. Always somebody who says there's too much food. Somebody else who says there's not enough food. Always someone with first flight nerves. Or somebody who was promised a window seat nine months ago. Well, you can feel calm and secure because there are a lot of constants like that. Sounds as if you had a bad flight. No, it wasn't a bad flight. Was it a good flight? I don't know. Well, there were only three kinds of flights. Good, bad, and routine. Oh, this was routine. Definitely. I'll get it. Yes? Flowers from Miss Barnett. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, what do you know? Oh, that David. He's got an old-fashioned approach. He seems to be learning. Is it a nice romantic car? These flowers aren't from David. Who are they from? One of the passengers on the plane. Well, who is he? When did he get on the plane? What does he look like? Oh, what beautiful roses. What a thoughtful man. I'll say. But I don't understand. Why should he send me roses? Oh, Pooh, every woman deserves roses. Does he want to take you to dinner? No. Well, then, does he? Oh, come on. See for yourself. Thank you for a wonderful flight and for making me truly feel like a very special person, Mr. Smith. Some routine flight. <laughs> well, that's what it was. With a handsome young passenger, huh? Oh, not young. Not handsome, really. A sort of shy, timid man in seat 3F. I didn't do anything for him. No grand gesture. He wasn't even an ident. But he sent you roses. I tell you, it was a routine flight. Roses for routine? Why? Well, as I said, it's only a small mystery. We come to you like this to ride your plane with our problems attached to our seat numbers. These are the constants because we're people. And we come sometimes not knowing, not quite certain what we're going to find at the end of our trip. The oceans have become ponds. And my small company felt it was time to expand try our products on the other side of the ponds. So they chose me to go out and explore a world I hardly knew. And when you begin something strange, you feel lonely and small. You sort of crawl into yourself. Each of us brings with us something of our own. We come to you with our own special beliefs. We bring our quiet, introspective interiors. We come with our age and our wonder, our different languages. We come to you experienced travelers, demanding service we've come to expect. Sometimes we come expecting the little extra help that has become a matter of routine. May I take your hat and coat, Mr. Smith? Oh, thank you. Uh, like me to take a briefcase? All right. Be much more comfortable for you. Thank you. Maybe later on, if you want to work, you'll find this folding table very handy. You see? Fine. Thank you. Mr. Smith? Would you like a martini or Manhattan? Oh, I don't think so, thanks. Perhaps you'd prefer some scotch or bourbon. All right. Some scotch. Good. With a little water on the side, I'll mix it myself. All right, I'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. It's especially delicious tonight, Mr. Smith. It looks wonderful. Bone up tea. Thank you. I just checked the weather with the captain, Mr. Smith. Oh. Should be very nice when we land. Good. Is this your first visit? Yes. Oh, you'll like this city. It's very colorful and the people are very warm and friendly. I hope so. I wouldn't know about that. 
Is this a business trip? Yes, I'm uh, looking over some new territories. Purely exploratory, I'm afraid. You see, our company's uh, trying to place our products around the world. And it's, uh, well, it's all rather complicated. <laughs> I'm certain of that. But I'm sure you can handle it. Meeting new people is always fun. You ought to know. <laughs> That's one of the best parts of my job. Seeing new places. Meeting people like you, Mr. Smith, who are traveling to all different corners of the world for all different reasons. Do you know what I think sometimes? What? I meet so many people going to so many new places. I think the world must be getting very fat. <laughs> <laughs> now, how long did that take? Those little pieces of routine. 20 seconds, a minute. I began to think about what she'd said. <laughs> Fat. And you know, she's right. Everybody's always saying the world is shrinking. But in fact, it's expanding, it's growing. People are flying all over it, trading products and pushing out the edges of understanding. Well, anyway, I began to feel that I wasn't alone on this big adventure of mine. I, I began to relax and look around at my fellow passengers. <laughs> oh, how cute. <laughs> oh, they're just darling, Mr. Suzuki. Are they all yours? My grandchildren. Oh, you're very lucky to have so many. I have four sons. They divide them up. <laughs> Such handsome ones, too. Tell me, do you think they'd like some pilot and stewardess wings? <laughs> I'm sure they would be happy. Good. I'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't want a drink before, Mr. Ahmed. I wondered if you'd like something else. Perhaps some ginger ale or some lemonade? Oh, no, no, thank you. Thank you very much. No. Here you are, Mr. Thornhill. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Hmm. The cold dish. I should have expected that. But it's one of Maxime's most delicious creations. Good. Let Maxime eat it. Is there something about the plate that doesn't appeal to you, sir? Perhaps I can... My dear, there is something about the airline that does not appeal to me. A cold meal. You don't even have the consideration to put warm food into your passengers? But this is the economy flight, sir. You see... Young lady, I am acutely aware of the particular class of this flight. I know what I had to pay for the ticket. And it has become quite apparent that for what I paid, I am to be treated as something a little bit lower than a thoroughbred field mouse. Well, what happened, sir? What happened? Well, I'm not certain you're strong enough at this high altitude to be able to listen. Oh, I would like very much to know. I fly all over the world on business trips. I am forced by the nature of my work to use all airlines, and I should know better what to expect, but no, I read your advertisements. The smoothness of jets that sail you softly over soft singing skies, the quiet and comfort of the cozy cabin, the world's most experienced. <laughs> I tell you, this is the world's most all right, but it would be Singularly impolite for me to tell you the most what. Oh, you are unhappy now, Mr. Thornhill. Why? This time, I am traveling for pleasure. I desperately want to enjoy the smoothness, to sit and dream in the quiet, to look out the window and see what I usually don't have time to observe. Nine months ago, I made my reservation, and I was promised, and your ticket person took an oath in blood, that I would have a window seat. Look where I have been planted. I tell you, young lady, it is humanly impossible to be further away from that window. Oh, you're right, Mr. Thornhill. This is a terrible thing. Now, I can't undo what has been done, but I would like to go with you to see our station manager at the next stop to arrange better seating for the rest of your trip. Would you allow me to do that, sir? Well, I... Of course, that would be splendid. Thank you very much, yes. We'll talk about this some more later. Meanwhile, the sauce on the chicken is a dream. Now, you let me know how you like it. Mm. The 
doesn't look bad at all. Not at all. Here you are, Mrs. Morrison. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. Now maybe I can get some rest. At least until the next feeding. I've written a note to myself to wake you at two. And any time you want to leave your seat, I'll be happy to come and watch over little Christopher. Thanks a lot. I'll take you up on that later. <laughs> I'll bring you the bottle at two. Thank you. Mrs. Dacuna, are you comfortable? Uh, it's grown a little chilly for you, yes? Would you like a blanket? I noticed that you're pulling your shawl around you, and I thought you might be more comfortable with a blanket, yes? Uh. Quoi? Fredo? Hey, you know so English. Portuguese. Hey, you follow Portuguese. I'll be right back. There's a language beyond language, isn't there? A language of human beings. And it recognizes the constants of human nature. The truly important constants to feel secure, to be recognized as an individual, perhaps to feel important. The clothes may be different, the colors different, but perhaps this is the answer to our mystery of the jet shrunken world. The world is one human being inside. The needs are all the same inside. No matter what it looks or sounds like on the outside. And you are important in this mechanized, scientifically oriented world. You can do so much for us who are surrounded by mechanical achievements, who line up to be weighed in, who file into your cabin, who sit in this long, mechanically perfect tube for six, eight, ten hours. You affect us each flight. Now, I say you because you are all the airline most of us ever see. We spend most of our time with you. How many hundreds of people are behind the food you serve us, huh? Your chefs, your cooks. From Guatemala to Manila, New Delhi to New York, they use their long training, their feeling, their artistry to create for us in a hundred different ways. And what you can do with this, with just a word, a smile. Your maintenance men, who work with skill, accuracy, care. This comes to us through you. Out of what you make us feel about the equipment every second of the flight. How you can make us appreciate the work of all these people. All your ticket agents from Buenos Aires to Bangkok in reservations who pour over routes and schedules, helping people to work out flights, to utilize their time better, get more fun out of it. The hundreds of people it must take of all languages to serve the world, to be truly an international airline. And for the time we're on a Pan American plane, we see them only through you. Your language is international. The warmth of a smile, an open gesture, a, a real interest in a fellow human being, a caring. It has nothing to do with words. Words can be misunderstood, but a look, a feeling, much more effective. And how you look, this is important too, your clothes, your neatness, your bearing, and your smile. You're always talking to us. The language beyond language. The language of flight service. And with it, you can make us all feel like very special people. Economy or deluxe, what does it matter? You know, it's a great compliment in this jet-paced world that somebody took time out for roses, huh? <laughs> You're so right. Well, I hope someday I learn enough to have such a routine flight. See you Thursday. Routine flight? 
what you do with it, create with it. This is the conclusion of the final mystery. Because of you, all the little mechanics of routine can add up to the grand gesture.